Hey guys, welcome back to another quick video. This is a topic I feel needs to be brought up again and again, especially for new artists who may feel bad for not sticking to the art project they've been working on till the very end, or that if the image they're working on doesn't end up exactly like what they're envisioning in their mind, then it must mean they're failures who never amount to anything. It's normal to feel this way, and in a way, you'll keep on feeling this way for the rest of your art life if I'm honest with you. But you learn to actively deal with it by intentionally forcing yourself to accept that almost no one just produces fantastic art on the first attempt all the time. I mean, yeah, of course you're more likely to finish work on a subject if you're super familiar with it, you'll draw faster and with less mistakes, but it takes a lot of time and practice to get there. However, when you're drawing a new subject or concept or emotion that you're not familiar with, you're gonna make a lot of mistakes and you have to be willing to embrace that life for a while. People who just draw new, unfamiliar stuff right on the first trial are extremely rare. I mean, we can't all be Jung Ji Kim. This is an extremely rare gift and trust me, you don't need it to become a good artist. Personally, I tend to do three things to salvage my work when I realize that it isn't going the way I want. It isn't the level of quality I want. I'm talking about digital art specifically in this video simply because it's easier to fix stuff when you're working on the computer or tablet. It's much, much harder to try to fix art in the traditional medium. So the first thing I do when I realize the art piece in its entirety isn't going to work is to change the composition. Changing the composition may be as simple as rethinking where your focus point is going to be and cropping out a lot of the other stuff. If, for example, I was originally going for a fairy-type character sitting on a tree branch and there's this lush forest behind her, if I don't like how the forest is turning out, I'm gonna change the composition of the image and crop to make it that uh, the focus is on the fairy's right eye instead. I usually make sure the new dimensions of the sketch fall sensibly on the golden ratio rectangle so that the end result still looks good to the viewer's eye. The second thing I tend to do if I'm not completely happy with the colors I've chosen for the piece is to simplify the color palette. This has saved my life so many times. Instead of getting lost in which colors to use where and trying to figure out for hours and hours how the lighting works, where the light source is coming from, etc, etc, I'll strip down the colors to the most basic and I'll work with only grays or I'll pick maybe three to five colors and make it a point to not exceed these colors. That really, really helps if you're beginning to feel overwhelmed. And one of the best pieces of advice I ever got when it comes to practicing how lighting works in art and gaining confidence is to paint in grayscale. Try to translate all the light and dark into grays and mid-tones and only that. Avoid all other colors. Once you've become more confident, you can start experimenting with different colors to represent light and dark and you'll eventually become bold enough to test out unusual color combinations. Something you gotta know is that in many cases, there's a psychological block in our heads stopping us from trying out certain things. And I've come to learn that sometimes these mental blocks are more challenging to overcome than the technical know-how. I learned that because you see someone creating a super interesting work of art and it's the idea, the concept behind it that really enchants you, not the technical skill at all. In my humble opinion, I believe that's one of the most important uses for art. There's a place for art that's super accurate and realistic, such as in medical books. And then there's a place for art that's meant to convey abstract concepts and human states. Sometimes the art has to be far removed from quote-unquote realism and correctness to truly convey a certain emotion. It's really incredible how some people can look at a mostly abstract artwork and see so much in it nonetheless. But that's enough segueing, on to the third thing. When I want to salvage, the better part of my artwork is to play around with the line art thickness. A very simple but lovely trick that gives life and personality to your character drawings is to make the line art thin where the light is hitting the character and make it thicker when there's shadow. You tend to see this a lot in manga and comic books and if you're intending to use a very small color palette anyway, this will further enhance the illusion of your character looking more dynamic and a little less flat. 
This tip, however, can only take you so far if your character is very static and nothing interesting is happening. I mean, no perspective, no strong facial expressions or body design or language probably means your drawing is just boring. These are the three tips I often use, but of course, and I know no one wants to hear me say this, there are times when you should move on from that piece. Never, ever feel bad about abandoning a drawing. It took me years to learn that, but it's a lesson worth learning. When you have to realize that it's okay for you mentally to accept that you need to redo that drawing later with a fresh perspective and a different state of mind. In short, sometimes a drawing just ain't happening. Take it in stride and move on. Do what I do. If there's a cool concept you really want to keep exploring and not throw away completely, write it down. I have a notebook entirely dedicated to writing down ideas and concepts and I carry it everywhere with me. I'm lousy at remembering ideas, so if I don't write them down within the minute, they'll disappear into the ether. So write stuff down. Now I don't want to delve into the topic of commission work in this video, but I want to point out one last thing. Regarding the arrogant, greedy monster that is perfectionism. You have to learn to not listen too hard to that voice in your head because it is a powerful voice. And if you allow it to get too loud, it may discourage you from making art altogether. You often need help from others to face perfectionism, by the way. And that's why it's important to learn how to find and keep good clients. Finding good clients is extremely difficult, but super important because quality clients over quantity clients anytime. When you have good communication and understand the client well, and the client is realistic and has a good idea of what your art entails and how it can be best utilized for their project, you'll come to realize that in many cases your sense of perfectionism and concern that your work isn't good enough is just that, your obsessive sense of perfectionism. Your client may actually be perfectly happy with what you created. This has happened to me over and over. Curate your clients, stick to the highest quality people, and keep them involved in your work step by step if possible. Let them be your second and third pair of eyes. Chances are they don't care that the jaguar you drew for them has one less spot on its right side. They're happy with the quality of work at the pay rate and it's okay for you to accept their acceptance. As long as you don't get complacent and think that you don't need to learn anything anymore, you're on the right track. Your art will get much better, God willing, and you will be able to get more work that places higher value on your skills that you've spent years honing. Keep working on your art every chance you get, and remember that it's a lifetime process of trying to best yourself, but shed the stress. The stress part just isn't worth it in the long run. Anyway, thank you so much again for tuning in. I hope you took away something from this, and I hope it wasn't too long. Please make sure to like and subscribe to my channel for more art and advice and other entertainment content that I enjoy. Thanks again everyone and stay safe.